behind me, apart from some extraordinarily pretty ladies, is the brand new Lamborghini Aventador. It's going to cost £230,000 and it's the successor to the Murcielago. It's also the fastest car that Lamborghini has produced. It does 0 to 62 miles an hour in just 2.9 seconds and it will go on to reach 217 miles an hour. Powering it is a 690 brake horsepower V12, about more we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, that also produces 509 pounds foot of torque. However, perhaps the most exciting thing is the rest of what's under the skin. There's a lot of race car inspired technology and we'll have a look at that now. The Bizzarini V12 is dead. Long live the brand new V12. It's a 60 degree V12, uh, six and a half litres, and as I said before, it puts out 690 brake horsepower. Uh, dry sumped and it will rev to over 8,000 RPM. It's got an extraordinarily short stroke. Perhaps more extraordinary is the ISR gearbox. ISR stands for independent shifting rod. It's a seven speed gearbox, but it's not dual clutch. Um, this obviously makes it lighter. But extraordinary, it has shift times of just 50 milliseconds, which is right up there with your clutch. The way it works is something like the Formula One gearboxes, whereby if you're going from, say, third to fourth, third will still be partially engaged as you're going into fourth gear. Sounds extraordinary to me. There's more information in this month's Evo magazine as well, so um, have a look at a more technical right up in there. When you look at the back of the car, the first thing you can probably see is the aluminium sort of trellis subframe. But what's really extraordinary about this is the carbon tub, the driver cell. It makes it nearly twice as stiff as the Murphy Largo. And it's mostly, it's got three different types of carbon fibre in it. Mostly though, it's the resin transfer moulding technique, which we first saw on the Sesto Elemente. Also in here is the push rod suspension. That's not been used on, really on any supercar since the Enzo and the Maserati MC12. It's fairly high tech, uh, which is evidenced by the fact that it's still used in Formula One by the top teams there. So the new Aventador might look like a mix between the old Murphy Largo and the Reventon, but underneath it, it is a completely new car with an awful lot of technology. I can't wait to drive it.